Today we're doing a little TIG welding on aluminum on a aluminum awning project at JD's shop, Apex Welding. And we're pushing this 200 amp machine pretty hard. Now, full disclosure here, this is not a sponsored video, but I did not pay for this machine. I asked them to send it to me because I got a lot of questions about it, couldn't answer it. All I could say was I'd never welded with it before. So I'm going to push it today hard, set max 200 amps. And uh, I'll be full pedal for a lot of the, of the project here. This is not the first job that we've done with this thing. Uh, it's been in JD's shop now for several months. We've done several DC jobs with it. We did this aluminum casting job here where you can see I'm using the arc, the cleaning action, just to kind of boil oil out of the casting before I start puddling it. One thing I did notice on this job, and this just strictly I noticed it on AC, was it's very important to have a really good ground. I think this machine starts in electrode positive and so if you intermittently lose your ground you get a little tungsten flare up so once I got a really good ground that problem seemed to seem to go away. Today's job is this big aluminum awning frame. You can see the dimensions it calls for a 33 foot span so hauling this thing to the job site once it's fabricated in the shop here is going to be you know probably one of the bigger chores didn't provide the angles on here so JD just laid out some string lines on the floor use the angle finder anytime you're doing a triangle like this you know one important tip is all the angles have to add up to 180 degrees on the inside so if you don't get 180 you know you've done something wrong using a Metabo 6 inch here this wheel is not designed for aluminum and it did grab quite a bit uh, spraying some WD-40 or using some bar soap on a wheel like that helps a lot on aluminum. We're just using the proper wheel probably is the best thing. So we're going to put end caps on these pieces here and they're all going to be sanded off. The knobs here on this machine are, you know, dial knobs so you can see what you've got but they are pretty sensitive. I'm going to do a little welding today and JD's going to do a little welding today too and uh, JD focuses on you know steel for the most part dual shield flux core and things like that but what better time to get your hand back in aluminum than on something that you're going to sand off the welds anyway. He's going to use this little camel grinding flap disc here designed for aluminum and it did a pretty good job. You'll, I'll show you in just a second here it doesn't load up very much. You see just a little bit of aluminum chunks on there where it's smeared but uh, it, did, it did a pretty good job. A four and a half inch disc with a six inch Metabo, you can really, you can bear down <laughs> and really take off some metal. We'll do a little bit more touch up work on those. It's strictly just for appearance. These are going to be uh, visible from the bottom for people walking around. So using the, uh, the Build Pro table here, Strong Hand Build Pro, just really super handy to get clamping anywhere on the table you can clamp something down so we're we're getting the angles here and using these extrusions for stops and clamping it down then we can put the really long pieces that we just put end caps on and clamp them against that and if the angle comes out a good fit and those are all clamped up good and tight we know we can't be far off All right, we'll be getting the tack weld here very soon. Got just a little bit of uh, bevel on that piece, and you can see there we're right almost 144 degrees. And we'll square this one up again using the angle finder at uh, at 72 degrees, and we'll get some tacks on it. It's all clamped down, not going to move. A few tack welds and then we'll get what we weld what we can here in place. You can see I'm feeding the filler wire from the side here. That's uh, mainly because we've got a camera in between me and the and the weld. That's also my excuse for shaking around like I'm doing. Once again I'm set have 200 amps on the machine and uh, probably should have actually just just really drove that weld in there a little bit more because it's going to be sanded off we're going to put a doubler plate over this over this particular side for this weld I will drive it in there hard 
maybe a little too hard at times. You can see here in just a second, I have to stop and, and fill in a keyhole. You can't really see the keyhole from the angle of the camera, but it, it opened up with me and I just crammed some rod in there and you know, I'm really sinking it in there for the penetration. So that one came out probably just about flush, maybe even slightly below flush in certain places. But we're gonna we're gonna do a little uh, sanding with that flap disc anyway. Now we're gonna go over to the plasma cam and create a doubler for this thing. And I'll show you kind of just uh, the the process here. Snapping some lines. You've got a you've got a grid. All those dots are a grid on here. And it's, it's very easy to get, you know, your dimensions. You can select your angles and, and all that in a separate menu that I won't show right now. But, you know, just snapping a couple lines, copying them, dragging them around, and then getting rid of the unwanted cut lines. And then, you know, basically you create your cut path. Get rid of the unwanted ones that, like I say, is smooth. You know, you can zoom in on all the corners and you get rid of those little lines. And then once you're, once you're satisfied, boom. You hit go, and this is sped up. It doesn't cut quite this fast, but it sure did put a nice, crisp edge on that aluminum. Aluminum doesn't typically cut quite as good as steel, but this is it's a nice, sharp edge. We took a flap disc and cleaned all that dross off prior to welding. It didn't take much at all. So that's a 3 16 roughly 5 millimeter thick plate, doubler plate. And most of the, uh, of the this is 3 inch, three inch uh, square tubing, 8th inch wall that we're welding it to. There are other, some other pieces that will go on later that are 3 16 wall. And this is where I'm pretty much maxed out at 200 amps. Which wouldn't seem like it would take quite that much, but it's a large heat sink. The, the, you know, when you got something this big, aluminum really pulls the heat out. This is one of those jobs where mixing a little bit of helium in with the argon or using a premix, something with maybe 50% helium, you would really notice a difference. It looks like from the well I should have maybe spent just a little more time cleaning, uh, probably a little remaining oxidation on that, that plasma cut surface. but I think it'll be fine. Yeah, you can see some of the stuff boiling up there just a little bit. This is uh, one of those areas that's not really going to be visible. It'll be on the inside. I chose the inside to put the doubler. So once that was welded up, we put this other cross member in here. And you might notice we're varying from the print. JD got verbal permission to, to do that. I don't really know exactly all the ins and outs, but um, main thing is to maintain the overall span and the, the peak height. And this thing's going to have some signage in it too that we'll show you in part two. Uh, we're doing some more plasma cam work, cutting the signage, the letters, and fastening them in there, as well as taking it on site and hanging it and putting it in place. So that should be a fun time. Now, a little a little commercial here. This is my TIG Finger product and I think it's readily apparent that this is where it really excels when you can just kind of glide it along on something that otherwise would be pretty much too hot to glide along with your pinky. And I've got the regular TIG Finger. It's what I'm using here. But I've also got an XL uh, that you can slip two fingers in and it's a little thicker for those really hot jobs or if you just got big, big fingers. Again, a full pedal, 200 amps, trying to just motor out as, as quick as I could at 200 amps. Anyway, I actually, you know, could have gone a little faster if I had a few more amps, but that's about right for travel speed. I'm using a 1.8, a 3.2 diameter filler metal here. Speaking of filler metal, uh, 4043 is probably, you know, one of the more common ones for a job like this. This is 6061 aluminum. But um, there's a new filler wire, fairly new. It's been out several years now. It's uh, Maxal. I think Hobart makes it now. It's 4943. And I'm beginning to really, really like it. 
using using 4043 here like I said you can see sometimes when it, when it, when the heat gets built up and the cooling rate slows there's a little graininess to the appearance and that's that's very typical of 4043 the 4943 will do it as well if you get things too hot and it's the, the cooling rate slows down well that's it for part one part two we'll do a little on site with a spool gun and we'll hang this thing in place and so that'll be a cool day again I support these videos with sales from my online store at weldmonger.com let me give you a little just a little quick peek here of my TIG finger product again this is the regular standard TIG finger see it glides along nice usually one finger in it and then the XL is much thicker and two fingers will slide in it for most people and again you can glide along and hold on some really hot metal right next to the weld for those times when you just can't find a prop all right it's also bundled as if you get one of each you can get a little savings and uh, you can learn more at weldmonger.com